right. Can you tell me your name and how old you are? Hi, uh, my name is Isabella and I'm five. And do you know where we are right now? Uh, we're in the coral reef. It is currently an unprecedented warming event for our oceans. Now to a concerning update on Florida's coral reefs. Surface temperatures in many oceans are right now breaking historical records. This year is going to be the quote unquote death knell for Keys Coral. I'm Lainey, the founder of Say. I learned about coral restoration through 1% for the planet, and the premise is really simple. As businesses that are benefiting from the planet, it is our duty to give back. Any dollar you make, 1% of that should go back to the planet. When we started working with 1% for the planet, we found out about coral restoration, and they were one of our first organizations that we decided to partner with, and that was uh, about three years ago. I'm Roxanne Boonstra. I work at the Coral Restoration Foundation. We're currently located in beautiful Key Largo, which is the first island of the Florida Keys, about 45 minutes south of Miami. Coral Restoration Foundation was founded in 2007, and we have three main branches or goals, if you will. The first one is to restore the reefs of the Florida Keys. The second is to educate and empower people to talk about the importance of the ocean. And the third one is to use science to further our coral monitoring techniques. A lot of people don't realize that corals aren't plants. They're not just rocks, they're actually animals. And they're actually not just one animal, they're made up of millions of these individual animals. They sense each other. They know that they're nearby each other underwater. So the story the reef tells every single morning is unique and different. And it's about how all the organisms on the reef interact with each other. And you can see all the habitat and all the nooks and crannies for things to live in here. But unfortunately, our reefs are starting to look more like this in the last 50 plus years. As someone who's in the marine conservation field, I look at this and I call this a rubble field, but you can think of it as a graveyard. We are at a site called Pickles. Today, we got to go on the boat with the team from Coral Restoration. This is something that we've been trying to do for years now. And uh, we had this trip planned and it just happened to coincide with this coral crisis that's happening right now where the coral is bleaching and dying um, really, really rapidly because of how hot the ocean has become. Corals actually have a mutually symbiotic relationship with this small little microscopic algae that we call zooxanthellae. The zooxanthellae themselves have this really beautiful kind of golden color to them that has this vibrancy to it. When the environment isn't ideal, in this case right now, due to prolonged increases in temperature, the relationship between the coral and the zooxanthellae breaks down which diminishes the pigmentation they give the corals. The corals are still very, very much alive, but when the pigmentation is gone, we see straight through the coral tissue to the white skeleton below. This is what we call coral bleaching. Corals can remain in a bleached state and they can recover, but sometimes they don't. And it really depends on the strength of the stressor, how long the stressor exists for, it depends on the coral species, and even more so, it depends on the genetic diversity within the species. And there's no guarantee about how quickly a coral might recover or not. One in every four marine species you can think of is directly supported by coral reefs. So without the corals, all that habitat's gone. Without the coral reefs, instead of having waves from hurricanes redistributed so that we simply get flooded, we now have waves crashing on the overseas highway. But what does that mean for us as a species? We aren't sure. Three out of every four breaths of oxygen we breathe come from our healthy oceans, not necessarily our terrestrial systems. Coral reefs are a really important part of the health of our oceans, and without them, we're not sure what's gonna happen. We've never lost an entire ecosystem before. So even for us, biologically, what is losing coral reefs going to mean? The upside to this is that CRF has known of this danger for some time. And we've made a lot of things happen in the last several months that have timed out very well. CRF innovated this technology called the coral tree. Every tree has about 60 corals that are hanging on it. They're in ideal, uh, optimal situations here where they're getting lots of water flow and lots of oxygen and nutrients and food, but they're also surrounded by light to charge the little zooxanthellae in their tissues. And so they grow really, really quickly in the nursery. 
Welcome to the Tavernier Nursery. This is the biggest in situ or ocean-based nursery in the world. It is about an acre and a half size space. It is home to over 30,000 corals um, and several different species of coral as well. When we're exploring it, you're gonna see different sections. You're gonna see different elkhorn coral, you're gonna see staghorn coral, you're gonna see boulder corals, and they're all in their own little areas. There's different tree construction as well to accommodate the different shapes all these corals take. Um, and yeah, so we're just going to explore. We're in Key Largo, Florida, according to live. <laughs> I think Sorry started green and scuba diving and I was like 10 and it was a wonderland. I can't even describe how amazing it was. I can still see it though in my memories because it was like, it was so magical. Like there was that big head coral that was dead. Usually that'd be alive with like thousands of fish eating off of it. Like all of this white stuff is like the graveyard. Tell us what else we can do. Everyone in the state community is wants to help, and um, I just want to know what's the best way we can help. I think education is the most immediate thing we can all do. We need to understand that our coral reef's been calling for help for a really, really long time. And just because right now we're seeing this happen, we can't forget about it next year. When the time comes and the opportunity is there for climate action, we should take it. We have to vote, we have to write to representatives, we have to be aware of environmentally friendly legislature that's gonna allow us to protect what we love and ensure that systems like this are available for when Isabella grows up. The only thing that makes me feel better about the climate crisis is to take action. It really does help. And so let's take action together. Voting is the most powerful thing that we can do to save the planet. We need to support legislation that acknowledges the climate crisis and has purposeful plans to give money and resources to supporting our planet. Registering to vote, showing up at the polls, so important.